This is the Umbrella Academy on TV Podcast Industries. We're back with Umbrella Academy Season 3, Episode 6, Marigold. Things are getting really bad out there. There's not much time until everything falls apart. Okay, so what's the plan? Harlan helps me figure out how to take his powers back. And if that doesn't work? Okay, look, Victor, I got your back, okay, but there's a limit. The others are right, we have to face this Google Blitz. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, well, you have till tonight. Otherwise, I swear to God, I'm gonna rumor your ass to come back with me, okay? Yes, yeah. Siblings swear. I'm serious. Don't mess with me, Tiny. Welcome back, fellow Academy alumni, for our sixth episode discussion of Season 3 of Umbrella Academy Marigold. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow Brollies. I am one of your other hosts, John. And I am Chris, pulling on my yellow marigolds. Nice, nice. Nice to dress, Chris, for our audio podcast. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. No one can tell whether I actually have a pair of washing up, yellow washing up gloves on or not. I like it. I like it. Another episode of Umbrella Academy and another uh, filling in of another backstory uh, yes. we have here uh, kicking off. We're going to talk about this episode in spoiler filled detail as always. So make sure you've watched episode six of season three of Umbrella Academy. Um, before continuing with the podcast, uh, if you want to subscribe to the podcast, you can also subscribe to us by going over to tvpodcastindustries.com where you get access to all of the shows that we're covering, all 51 of the shows I think we've covered uh, so far over there. Yes. Yeah. Lots and lots. And we have just started our coverage of the Sandman on Netflix as well. So you'll get our, our coverage of that as well. Hopefully you'll join us for that. Uh, you can also join us on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV podcast industries to share your thoughts about any of the episodes that uh, we're covering. Yes, we have sand everywhere, but it's okay because we're here to talk about <laughs> learning education with the academy <laughs> so should we jump straight in absolutely absolutely that would really annoy anakin skywalker wouldn't it yes <laughs> yeah, i guess it's not his favorite to the show. point of killing yeah probably mm. <laughs> probably yeah let's get into this discussion about this episode of umbrella academy um this show was created for television by steve blackman and jeremy slater uh it was based on the comic book series by jared way and gabriel Ba. <gasps> The director for this episode is Jeff King, his first Umbrella Academy episode, but he will be directing the finale of this season. Uh huh. Nice. Mm, yes. I wonder if that's telling him somehow. Mm, it might be something uh, looping back to this episode, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, maybe not. The teleplay for this episode was written by Lauren Otero. Interestingly, Lauren wrote an episode of Modoc, the adult animated Marvel oh, show. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I cool. loved that. Yeah, me it was too. Patton Oswald. It was fantastic. It was zany. Mm-hmm. It was. Just good fun. It was. And it got canned. <laughs> no, no. Um, we got one season and that's it. But we did hear confirmation that Modoc will return in uh, live action coming up in, uh, I think it's Ant- in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania that he's coming up in. Yeah, pa- apparently. Mm. Apparently. Yeah. Not fully 100%, Not confirmed. 1000% confirmed, but one of those... Everyone knows it, and it's been said to people, and but they have not put the words out. Yes, Modoc. There was a big smile on uh, on Feige, on Kevin Feige's face, uh, as far as I remember, when when he was asked about it. So that'll be interesting. Anyway, uh, not written by Lauren Otero. Uh, this episode of Umbrella Academy is written by her. Um, John, do you want to give us the synopsis for this episode? Sure. In 2014, Pogo leaves the employment of Reginald Hargreaves after a disagreement over the Sparrows' training. As he departs from the Sparrow Academy, he hands Marcus the pills to sedate Reginald and protect the team. In the present, after an exhausting night, Lila and Diego have misplaced Stanley. A trail of Slim Jims takes them both through a secret tunnel in the White Buffalo Suite, which leads to an abandoned alternate version of the Hotel Obsidian, called Hotel Oblivion. Mm. At the Sparrow Academy, Ben asks Luther to join the Sparrows, and Klaus tries to bond with his father, asking why Reggie in the original timeline killed him repeatedly. To figure it out, Reginald, who is fascinated, fascinated with Klaus, decides to experiment by electrocuting Klaus to death. 
After tracking Pogo to his caravan home, he tells Five that the symbols in the tattoo were connected to Reginald's obsession with a dangerous idea called Project Oblivion. Mm. Meanwhile, back at Hotel Oblivion, Lila admits to Diego that Stan is not their son, but is the son of her friend Trudy, and she is just babysitting for a week. (laughs) But despite the shock of her bombshell, they still can't find Stanley. To try and get some help, Diego rings the reception bell, only to unleash a monster that attacks Leela and Diego in the alternate hotel, cutting off two of Diego's fingers. They escape back through the tunnel and manage to lock the monster out of Hotel Obsidian, just as Stanley returns back to the White Buffalo Suite and is then unceremoniously consumed by the Kugel Blitz in front of Leela and Diego. Oh, God. At the deserted former drive through cinema, Harlan and Victor manage to succeed in transferring Harlan's powers back to Victor. But while Victor is exhausted and resting, Harlan lets slip to Allison that he killed the Umbrella's mothers, thinking that she already knew. With this new information, Allison delivers him to the Sparrows. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Well, you're probably going to be dead. Well, yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> this episode spun everything on its head for this season oh yeah everything yep. we thought was going on um i i came out of this episode afterwards and went you did it again umbrella academy you had me thinking that reginald is all right that his kids were the ones that were <laughs> drugging him and they were taking advantage of him and then it turns out he is an evil bastard again he's still exactly the same kind of guy that we've seen in the other seasons uh so yes i really liked the fact that they were able to twist it on me and of course the even bigger twist that there is no child um, of <laughs> Lila and Diego. The reason why Lila looks so well, even though she's been gone for 12 years, is because she hasn't been gone for 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, this show really likes to twist it, doesn't it? Yep, oh, it certainly does. I loved it. So should we get into our spoiler-filled discussion of mm-hmm. this episode? Yes. Absolutely. I'm going to kick us off with Pogo is back. In business, boys, tattooing (laughs) the hell out of arms, legs, belly buttons, faces, necks, you name it. Um, But you don't tell you kids. No, not not kids. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I I really like this. It's it's also funny that we obviously still have the exact same uh, voice from uh, from Pogo. It's still the exact same upper class British accent, (laughs) and now it suits him even less as a as a tattoo artist. who's also a Simeon. Yeah. And I do love how he doesn't tattoo kids mm-hmm. until the kid asks it really. And then the kid takes off the shirt and tattoos him. Anyway. And then he gets tattooed. Yes, yes. exactly. Exactly. I, I had so much fun with this. Mm-hmm. Just the flashback, the, the Pogo himself. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's so much to unpack on this, this, just this one part, like fully under like, so Pogo, Pogo doing the uh, Kill Bill training montage fun kind of kung fu fight scene was just great. I I totally had the Matrix in my head for that scene. No, I I had kind of Bruce Lee kind of Mm -hmm. kung kung fu, that type of thing. I had all of that in my head. Yeah, I think it was with the Matrix bit with the squid arm and Mm. you have Jamie doing the... Sort of the 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 lean back, uh, like yeah. we saw Neo do on, on top of the skyscraper with the bullets mm-hmm. from the Men in Black. I know that's not their names, no. but uh, I always thought they were the Men in Black. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, yeah, just yeah, the the great sparring the uh, with the the bell in the middle, uh, sort of just really, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this scene with Pogo, actually. Um, and, and just what it kind of brought here. Absolutely. And um, just certainly with the little confrontation with Reggie as well. Yeah. I, I loved having that flashback to all of this Barrow Academy in, in, in younger days, all training together. I thought it was really good. I loved how it all resolved, how Jamie actually won, um, what looked like an unwinnable session. And that was a teachable moment from, Re- from Reggie, but he was willing to let Jamie die right then and there. Um, if she didn't tap out or work out how to win yep. then uh, it looked like he was going to allow Ben Killer basically Yeah, I, I also quite like that Alfonso's face was less disfigured yes. um, back in 2014 yeah. which was a nice little touch I yeah. thought yeah. Yeah, yeah, Derek you talked about how they they had you like oh my god Hargreaves is a good guy it's great 
And then just throughout this flashback, you he's the same Reggie Hargreaves. Mm-hmm. Like, he is just 100%. And that Pogo is the one telling them to drug him and keep yeah. him sedated. Yeah. Like, it was a nice little touch to see that. Absolutely. Um, and also a really good reminder. We, we'd we mentioned about him being an alien on our podcast earlier on, but they haven't talked about that. Uh, here we do get it. Uh, called out because uh, Pogo says to him, where's your humanity, man? And he goes, what humanity? From Reggie yeah. confirming again, I'm an alien here. That's why I treat these people the way I treat them. They will do what I want them to do. That is their job. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Fascinating. 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 And then back in present day, again, just getting five and Pogo together. Like yeah. first in the, 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 in the, the biker place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, just after that. And then you get the introduction to Pogo's missus. Well, absolutely. But look, if you've got a show that you've got a 15 year old and you've got a, a, a simian that speaks, stick them both on motorbikes. Sure. Why not? And <laughs> have a chase down the road. <laughs> Hilarious. That was so much fun to yeah. see, uh, to see that, uh, that that's the chase that's going on. Both of them on motorbikes down the street. It was good really good fun. And just blinking and getting the guy off it was the fun part. Oh, yeah. It was very cool. It was really good. And, yeah. and of course, there's this kid walking up to the, uh, the, the caravan, uh, and Pogo's wife is, you know, get your ass off my property mm-hmm. before I call the truant officer. Of course. It was really nice, you know? Yeah. 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 Really good to uh, have that introduction to her there as well. And then just seeing what happens with the, this act, this, the, what comes from this and Project Oblivion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, finding out more there that this is an ongoing part of it. it just the whole thing is, it leads to more questions and then finalizing with, the, time continuing the way it is mm-hmm. which five gets the tattoo he must not break the timeline yeah exactly and and also with project oblivion just the this the second part of that tattoo that number five got from himself mm. uh back at the commission's headquarters is this sigil um which is on the door in the um great white buffalo suite yes and uh you know, there's this talk of from Pogo that it actually could be magic, which you know Number Five is a little bit skeptical of mm-hmm. because you know, d- despite the horror that is Reggie Hargreaves, um, the one thing that at least garnered some respect from Number Five was that he believed in science. Yes, you know, he was a man well, of science. You know, like we see him with with doing on Klaus effectively later mm-hmm. on in the episode, the hypothesis testing. Yes. Uh, so, you know, fascinating. <laughs> yeah, really good. And uh, yeah, I like, I like that that's, this is how they've used Pogo in this season, bringing him back to give uh, this information and, and kind of get a, an interesting idea of what happened to him in this world uh, without the uh, the umbrellas, I suppose, uh, with dealing with the sparrows. But uh, yeah, really... Um, it was a, a kind of a touching moment, even though we haven't seen Pogo. We know how important he was to the Umbrella Academy family from the, to those Hargreaves, and seeing him effectively thrown out uh, within a couple of hours by uh, by Reginald was a bit. It was sad. It came across really sad. You could see everybody yeah. was really hurt by it in the Sparrow uh, group. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think um, the other thing with with Reggie here um, is just how you. Know, like you mentioned, seeing the the drugs that Pogo hands over mm-hmm. to the, the sparrows, and um, ultimately Klaus at the end, thinking he's going to that doped up Reggie who was kind of fun mm-hmm. with him, um, but ultimately he's given him the tricks of the trade to stop taking the dope. So he's back to his uncompromising. Uh, sociopathic uh sensibilities yeah. that that we see here and um, death 58 for yeah. casting yeah. and uh <laughs> I, I did like reggie's you are marvelously deranged yes. uh, as he is you know looking to hug hug klaus uh, as he puts on the pads that will send the 240 odd volts uh, directly through his body mm-hmm. you know and just klaus uh, just the way robert sheehan s- is like, what are you doing? No. What, what, what's this? You know, uh, uh, like sort of leaning into the hug and then just the little 
What what are you doing? What's that? What, what's that? <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, yep, yeah, that was my point. Uh, all about Pogo, and welcome back, Adam Godley, to uh, to the role as well. Good to, good to have him back there. I'm not sure whether we're going to see him for the rest of the season. He's kind of imparted his wisdom, but uh, but good to have him back uh, for oh, this episode. Uh, who wants to go next? Who wants to give us our, the next big moment from the episode? Oh well, I think I'll go next because it's just the great gag. I think from mm. this episode, I I just loved it um you know i guess there may be people that take it either way that they would love diego to have the son mm-hmm. but it, it, it it's the fact that it's coming from lila that yeah, that all this time of stanley diego you know and certainly from the last episode where you know diego was the one that initiated the hug sort of being protective and 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 comforting to his son mm-hmm. uh, and what we get here is that it's just a mate Trudy's son <laughs> and she's babysitting for him. So she uh. just thought she would say it was um her son and yeah. his son so that she could kind of let him squirm and get a bit of revenge back on him. You and know? so she could kick the tires and find out how good of a parent <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I absolutely love yeah, these two together. And good. Lila is so great. I love her in this season. You forget how funny she is at times, but she has some great lines here. I love uh, <laughs> when Diego realizes this and goes, are you insane? And she goes, I was, we met in a mental <laughs> asylum. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, it was just yes. really good. Go. And I think the other side of this is the fact that Diego uh, and Lila are mm. are looking for a missing Stanley here. They've followed his, you know, his favorite meat treat uh, to to that door, and um, yeah. and they go through it then into the Hotel Oblivion, yes. which w- was cool. I loved the whole, or you know, the the Japanese style here mm-hmm. uh, in, in the um, the Oblivion. And and even where Diego initially goes to ring the bell, and Lila's like, no, it says don't touch, <laughs> you know, with the, with the Japanese by by the bell. I mean, I'm assuming it's Japanese, but yeah. but I, I really like this. That's where you get the bombshell from from uh, Lila about Stanley, but and it, I love that it comes from a slip as well, where it's Trudy's going to kill me, and mm-hmm. it's like who who's this, but. With all of this, they still go looking for Stanley. They can't find it. It effectively, they, this, this, this search results in Diego ringing this bell, which unleashes some kind of, I mean, we said monster, but it, it, with the axe, it could be partly samurai in, in Maybe. nature in some way, which takes two of his fingers off. And mm-hmm. I think the other part that just builds on this gag is, when they get back to the the hotel Obsidian and mm-hmm. into the uh, Great White Buffalo Suite, and you know they're keeping this monster out, it trails off, and then you just hear Stanley uh, slurping through his straw <laughs> from uh, from his his drink, and he's been in the Obsidian all the time on that side, just going to get snacks. And then the third layer of all of this is that earlier on we see that huge Kugel Blitz pulse, mm-hmm. a real big one. I mean, the, the, the noise, the sound effect that they're putting on it now is much more ramped up. Yes. You know, and it never returns for the whole episode. <laughs> and literally that moment where they turn around, Stanley is safe. You've just heard that he's not Diego's son. And he gets wiped out by the the pulse, returning back to the the the, the Sparrow Academy's basement. I loved this from top to bottom. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, with yeah. I guess some of my my favourite characters mm-hmm. of uh, this group, and I just thought it was genius and beautiful and hilarious. And added, you know, with the whole hotel oblivion, this with the doorway through yeah uh, you know just connected with what pogo and five were talking about yeah. so i really really enjoyed this hugely great gag 
It's a really, really good gag. I still think I'm laughing in shock at the fact that they killed <laughs> off Stanley at that very moment. It's just so well timed, and I, I've loved him in the series. Been really, really enjoying him, and knowing that he has absolutely no connection to Lila and to uh, to Diego, and that he's just been playing along with this. He's known, obviously, he's not uh, Diego's son. He's just been playing along with this as he's yeah. gone, and he's gone and killed Klaus as well last episode. All that stuff. He was still playing along with this idea that he was Diego's son. <laughs> and then gets wiped out. It's really sad that he's not going to be back in the show. I hope to see him again, uh, either later on in the season or uh, in other shows, because he's really good. I, li- I like him a lot. Yeah. Good kid. Yeah. My, my, uh, my thoughts of him being the son of uh, two superpowered individuals and his earwax being superpowered. <laughs> nah, that's, that's all gone, Chris. Now. Yeah. That's all gone. Um, this, look. Lila for me is the the highlight. She, her and Robert Sheen are just as the two actors within the series who I just gravitate towards based on their delivery of the characters. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I, I think it's them probably coming in with the irreverence of the writing on top of that. It's just every scene is just chewed, stolen, and but it's also so well delivered in a way that you're like, Oh yeah, cool. I'm down to give. I I would actually take a Lila spin off, right? <laughs> like her on her own little adventures with Stanley or Diego or her and Klaus. Yeah, Mwah. like that would be just fantastic. I think as well. It's it it's the fact that Lila and Diego have misplaced, shall we say, Stanley because. Their, their their minds and bodies have quite frankly been on other things uh, mm-hmm. over the course of the previous evening <laughs> and uh, and I just like the fact that it's almost like they they were about to create a happy family <laughs> and yeah. it's completely gone uh, in the instant that Lila says what she does yeah and with just the the blitzing of Stanley from the Kugel Pulse. Absolutely. So what do you guys think of Hotel Oblivion? It's alternate dimension? Yeah. Well, it's no Hotel California. I'll put it that way. Um, no. Maybe did, it I, is because, oh no, you can leave Hotel Oblivion because they just did leave yes. Hotel Oblivion. Yeah. So not Hotel California. Yes. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. I thought, I thought this, this idea of this kind of connected um, alternate world. And it's, it's only the hotel that's been, I don't know whether it's been recreated as part of this yeah. project. Um, but it's only the hotel. We see Diego try and leave by the front doors and continually spins back in, which is always a funny gag when you do these, uh, do these kind of things. But, um, but it was, I was getting kind of vibes of, uh, of the labyrinth, um, something like that, that they're going into because there's this minotaur beast creature in there mm. that's chasing them down. It was that kind of feeling that was in there. But, yeah. um, this is obviously connected to the project that uh, that Reggie was speaking about and Future Five's message about we still have oblivion. So yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm yeah. really intrigued by it, and it is it is a nice uh, a nice dark side to this place that they've been living in. Yeah, yeah, I I actually got the labyrinth piece too. Right. That was what I kind of took. Like if you think of how halls are connected in hotels mm-hmm. and the lobby, and like basically you can't leave. It is essentially I was getting that. I actually thought for a second once it was in, they weren't going to get back out. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, that kind too. of they'd be forever running. Yeah, and everyone just slowly goes in, and that's it. Exactly. I, All I'm the umbrella so academy in... lost in there, like yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I thought that oh, that cool. We're into the next half, and the next half will be everyone just slowly going into this labyrinth. Mm-hmm. That's the next half of the story. Um, but when they got out, I was like, oh, okay, so maybe they're the the. The lobby is the entrance, then to go through all the halls, and then there's something at the prize at the center. Maybe, like, yeah, like that kind of thing. I'm, I'm interested yeah. to see where they go with this. Well, now they have to piece it's... together all the story, don't they? Because everybody yes. has a little bit of it, or well, a couple of people have a little bits of the story here. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But again, we mentioned last time about about Christ falling upwards, I suppose, um, and uh, being the one that reveals all of this stuff. So he's the one that found the. Buffalo, the white buffalo room in the first place. You know, that's yeah. that, that was him that found it. So, and that's where um, where they find the entrance over to the the Hotel Oblivion. So, again, Klaus, even though he had no involvement exactly. here, is the one that's been able to find this um, 
connection to the hotel of oblivion and they only yeah because they only know it's a door because the harpoon that goes through him Mm -hmm. gets stuck in the door and as it's pulled out the door opens the door opens yes See, place yeah. by falling upwards is uh, more Absolutely. important than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Anything else on Stanley? Anything else on uh, on that storyline, John? Probably uh, no, nothing else on Stanley, but anything else on the storyline? <laughs> no, I, I think you know. Dust. For me, I just really enjoyed this um, self congratulatory gag that mm-hmm. has been done here with this. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I was like, fur juice. Great in the writing, great yeah. in the execution. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Really good, really good. How about yourself, Chris? What's your big moment for the episode? I'm going to take the, the remainder. I'm going to take uh, the Victor power up mm. and the uh, Harlan's body mm. um, as my point. Um, so really happy to see. Well, hold on. Let me jump to the end and we'll go back to Victor and Harland, right? So Harlan is delivered dead yes it's yeah. like it's... shot in the head i didn't even notice a bullet hole yeah i noticed his eyes were open that's what was telling me that he was uh he was dead yeah but it took it took me the, the second viewing i think the first time i was like oh allison's just thrown him in the boot yeah and brought him over at the trunk for our american listeners and brought him over to to fulfill because it's so quickly shown um but didn't realize it was a body the first time yeah that harland is dead Second time we watched it, I was going, okay, hang on a second. Yeah. Has you just rumored him to stay in that position for a while or something? But uh, Bullet Hole seems pretty Yeah, definitive. and there was blood. I saw the blood um, the second time uh, that we watched it. But I, I didn't notice the bullet hole either. So, um, Interesting. Yeah, but he looked pretty dead as a dodo. Torn up. <laughs> yeah. and the reason I wanted to bring this up as the first part of my t- topic or my kind of point is that um, we in the last episode we discussed the continued downfall of Alison yes uh, like she, her character is getting closer and closer and closer to being a bad guy mm-hmm. like mm. like and this I again this is the part like she learns that Harlan is the reason for her mother's death. Yeah. In this universe. So not technically her mother, but her mother, like, depending on, like, her multi, her alternate universe mother, on the timeline mother, excuse me. Yeah. And she then kills him and delivers him to the sparrows as part of the, the their request. Yeah. Uh, for the, for bringing me the head of kind of thing. You, you're absolutely right. It's, the, it's that her mother doesn't exist in this universe, which means Alison doesn't exist in this universe, which means yes. her daughter doesn't exist in this universe. So that's, it's the full timeline that he's created by killing her mother in this timeline um, yeah. is, is effectively what she's so angry yeah. about. But uh, I also like that Luther has joined the Sparrow Academy, is wearing his Sparrow Academy outfit because he's definitely one for the merch. Um, but he's what he's the one that, is there when she delivers the body. He's the one that sees what's happened with Allison as well. So, and Reginald back to absolutely full Reginald quality there as well in his, with his uh, perfectly manicured mustache. Well, that's um, it. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the thing with Allison was that I do, I like the fact that she goes into the Sparrow Academy because mm-hmm. she could have just dropped him off and then gone back to the hotel obsidian, but yeah. she does go in, uh, yep. I guess, joining them. Yeah. Uh, but seeing Luther, there's just this scoff yeah. of, of disdain seeing him yeah. uh, in in the Sparrow outfit. Mm-hmm. Tweet, tweet. Yeah. Which is red yeah. leather rather than a bird costume, of yes. course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, her going into the, the Sparrow, for me, is the... She, she, she's Her loyalty has changed. She's changed side now. She's gone. The Sparrow was the antagonist. She... Alison now is an antagonist. Mm. She has taken that leap, if you will, or uh, taken flight mm-hmm. into the Sparrow Academy. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. We'll see where that goes. Will she stay bad? Is she the big bad now? Yeah. Is she going to rumor everyone? Um, we Time will tell. Yeah. Um, stepping back to Har- what Harlan being depowered... We see Victor and Harlan like discuss the 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 the, the power and get it. basically the reason he is what he is, which we knew is that part of 
Victor, part of the the power, the 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 particles, the 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 fireflies mm-hmm. from him is in him. Yeah, that is it. so. Like Victor, the needs that Victor needs to take back that part of him, yeah. that part of his power, um, yes. and seeing this huge, interesting kind of give and take. Give me your like. Find the home of the universe mm-hmm. or the people or the power. You know, I was a bit like, there's a special sound to the power. I was like, okay, kind of see what you're giving me and telling me that like they listen to like certain frequencies and there's a, oh, the, there's a frequency for their firefly power. Mm. And that he has, that Victor has to kind of zone in on that and then pull it out. Yes. Kind of, but that's visually stunning. Looked great. Kind of was like science is a bit <laughs> iffy on this one. Don't think the science of superpowers, Chris. <laughs> there should be. There should be. <laughs> there certainly should. There certainly should. Uh, yeah, but we also kind of learn, and we, we've we've seen it quite a bit from the first time we saw Harlan in the show that um, it's been it, it's in his mind constantly this humming, yeah. and that's what he's trying to block out yeah. by listening to the to the. Uh, various sounds that he's been putting in his ears to try and stop this. So this whole task really that Victor's going through is because it was his fault that Harlan has been in this position and has been uh, being driven insane really since 1989 when this sound came back into the world. It's been going through his head ever since. So, so that's why he's taking it back. That's why Victor needs to take the power back out of Harlan because um, it's ruined his life completely. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It was a really f- fabulous scene, though. I loved that one, particularly with Alison sitting away. Um, she's having those conversations with Ray again, uh, like she did last episode, where she's uh, has this figment of her imagination, you know, telling her things are going to be better. And behind her, the sky is darkening as uh, as Harlan and Victor are trying to swap the power effectively. I think it's, it was a really cool image. And then as she runs in and sees the two of them flying in the air with their uh, different colored powers around them. It's a really cool image. Yeah, yeah. yeah really cool. absolutely. And I, I think, you know, like what you were saying, Chris, in, in the last episode about whether she would become more of an antagonist or, you know, there's mm-hmm. this potential for redemption, at least until that point where she snaps because of what Harlan tells her. Yeah. You know, she has kept him safe. She has kept it from the others. Mm-hmm. She actually, you know, intervenes because she sees the energy resonating that's hurting Victor uh, mm-hmm. to yeah. try and get um, Harlan to stop. U- ultimately, kind of told just to clear off. And yeah, you have this, this uh, you know, the great moment on the swings where, as you say, the sky darkens mm-hmm. and so on. And you see it all swirling around yeah. uh, as they're sort of floating in air, but uh, it, I just thought it was really nice. I just liked how it moved from that really intimate moment with her and Ray on mm-hmm. the swings and her going through this stuff yeah. uh, with him to then effectively, you know, seeing what's happened, but then snapping again because yeah. of, um, because of Harlan's information and what he's done. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Good point, Chris. Anything else on the the point you want to talk about? I think that's it from my side. Any other notes or things that we haven't discussed for the episode? I just have one note for from my side, which is I did love that in the Hotel Oblivion, uh, the buffalo painting had the rear end of the buffalo sticking out into the room. (laughs) Uh, So, again, maybe a little bit of a hint as to, uh, you know, being um, sort of Two sides of the same thing. Yes. Um, yes, yeah. yes. In this case, the buffalo. I just thought it was a funny gag. But I did. <laughs> I, it's a funny gag as well. Um, yeah. So I really like that. And just like the reaction of Leela and Diego to seeing, you know, this arse of a buffalo sticking out of the painting frame. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good fun moment. Another fun moment was, uh, was Faye's reaction to, um, to the new relationship between uh, between Luther and uh, and Sloane, where they think they're being all quiet and, uh, and keeping it under <laughs> yeah, exactly. under uh, under wraps, and Faye's kind of going, "I share a wall with your bedroom. I know exactly what's going on." <laughs> but that was really good before uh, him 
becoming a member of the Sparrow Academy. So now uh, they're evening up the numbers, really, on the number of members of the Sparrow Academy and the number of members of the Umbrella Academy, right? We're getting, getting yeah. closer to even Just numbers bit, now, yeah. I think. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, overall, John, how would you rate this episode? I would give this four and a half false paternity tests out of five. Um, yes, uh, really just loved this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, it, it was just, it was fun. It had the drama of Harlan, Allison and Victor. Mm-hmm. It had the intrigue of Oblivion. It had Pogo. Um, yeah, I, I just really, really enjoyed this. I think mean, all the elements that makes Umbrella Academy, uh, just so good. So yeah. yeah, four and a half false paternity tests out of five. Excellent. Chris, any thoughts on, on the episode? Final thoughts? Loved it. I'm interested to see where the final kind of half of this season is going. Mm. Um, I really didn't expect to introduce kind of like the alternate. The alternate hotel. Like, I didn't know what Project Oblivion or yeah. Oblivion was going to be, yeah. and then seeing Obsidian and the hotel, and it's it's a, it's a, it's an inverse almost, if you want to think yeah. that, but i.e. from the rump of the bison. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm very intrigued to see where we go with this, mm-hmm. and then I've talked about Allison a few times now. I think it's because I, I I saw so much potential and for good and humanity in the character yeah. over the last couple of seasons. And just seeing her break, yeah, it's it, it sounds terrible. It's fun to see the character break well, yeah. because I'm interested to see where the, they're taking the character. Yeah. So overall, absolutely loved it. Excellent. It's the bubbles of her. It's her humanity kind of draining out of her. Yeah. In a sense, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, exactly. It's really well portrayed. Yeah. Uh, here. Yeah. What about yourself, Derek? Uh, and for me, this is this is my favorite episode of the season. But it can't be the episode it is without the other. Uh, five episodes beforehand yeah. it's it's the fact that it flips everything that we thought we knew yeah, on its head exactly and messes with all of the expectations i had for the season so uh, i think there's a really really good episode with great performances really good writing uh some cool moments uh but it wouldn't have been the best episode of the season without the other episode we saw before so uh great job Everybody want to go for a drink in the Obsidian Lounge? Oh, yeah, I'm a bit Not parched. if that's Samurai's there. That would be the Oblivion Lounge, Chris, where you oh, get sorry, obliterated. Sorry. Okay. Good. Um, okay, yes. So, yes, let's go to the... Let's, but there's sushi. Let's, let's stay in the Obsidian Lounge. Yes. Uh, and still get obliterated, but with tequila. Yes. Exactly. Good stuff. Good stuff. What's the sixth question in our Obsidian Lounge pub quiz, John? Yeah, fellow quizzes, fellow brollies, question six... What is Stanley's favorite snack combination or last meal? That's terrible, John. A terrible way to say it. Well, Goodbye, Stanley. Yeah. R.I.P. Stanley. Uh, gone, but not forgotten. Definitely not. Definitely not. John, what? Do you want to give the question one more time? What is Stanley's favorite snack combination or last meal? Good stuff. Uh, email that into us along with the answers to all the rest of the questions that we'll be giving out throughout our coverage of Umbrella Academy. You can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com and you could be in with a chance of getting your hands on some Umbrella Academy goodies at the end of the season. Nice. Should we get some feedback, gentlemen? I think we should. Absolutely. Yes, we got some feedback in from Dr. Bob Phillips uh, for this episode. He says, this was harsh. They killed Stan, Strip Diego, Fatherhood and a couple of digits drew the fairy sprinkles from Harlan before dressing him in a blanket and popping him in a boot and ended up giving Pogo a trailer in a forest, not the library he deserved. At least we know Sloane's being treated well by lovely Luther. <laughs> yes, they were very cute, actually. They were, yes. They yes. yes. I do like the line from Luther where he's saying that the family is only connected by shared trauma and uh, to, to Sloane. I thought that was a good way to connect them. And he's saying now she's more important than the family or as important as the family. So yes, that's really yeah. good. But... In in truth, which family is not connected by drama? That is the <laughs> in real life. Absolutely. Um, thank, <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Bob, for that. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Bob. Absolutely. Thanks, Dr. Bob. We got some voicemails in after our episode five uh, podcast on Umbrella Academy from Brandy Elise Anderson. I uh, sent in two voicemails. I'll play the first one now. Hello. I just wanted to touch on something that was mentioned in episode four for Umbrella Academy. And that was that we don't know um, where the yellow lights came from. Are they the source of the power and um, those kind of things? But we actually do know. Um, We see in the finale for season one, Reginald opens up that container and releases all those glowing yellow balls. Um, 
And then the next thing we know, he is on Earth in some, I think, unspecified time. Um, then in season two, when Victor saves Harlan, we see those balls transfer into Harlan during the mouth to mouth. And next thing you know, he's got powers like Victor's powers. Um, and in the opening of season three, we actually see those yellow balls go into the girl on the train. And then she becomes instantly pregnant and goes into labor, which, by the way, is a horrible thing to do to somebody and <laughs> unexpectedly. And so we know that. Reginald is the reason that these 47 women became pregnant, and we know that those balls are the thing that made them pregnant and also and somehow gave them powers. Now, why he did it, that part's still up in the air, but the rest is already known. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Brandy. Um I'll jump in here very quickly. I think the, the the reason we were saying this was that in season one, that that the scene you're leading to when he's kind of with his wife, that it seems to be another planet, mm-hmm. uh, or based on that we know he's an alien now. Um, it seemed that he released the fireflies, the balls of light, on another planet, mm-hmm. and that was kind of the piece that we were like, oh, okay, well, how do they get from that planet to Earth? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just kind of because we see the ships taking off to yeah. escape whatever's happening with that planet as his wife dies. Um, so I think that's where I was kind of more alluding to on that kind of like we were not a hundred percent because like did they slowly travel across the universe to get to or did he actually and maybe it was just it's um, kind of shorthand and they just forgot to put another scene in where he's on Earth and he opens another box of fireflies. To see if that helps there. Yeah. Um, Maybe. I, I think I, from, from my point of view, I think it's just because we've never really had that, that actually made clear what was Reggie doing when he released that. Was he choosing specific women around the world to become pregnant, uh, with these powered, uh, yeah. uh, children? Um, that's all it was. But yeah, really good points. Uh, Brandy, that's uh, yeah. definitely where, uh, elements of that in the past. I think we even talked about them on this podcast. Uh, we may have just forgotten about them <laughs> back on, on uh, our 304 podcast, but, uh, but definitely there are, there are bits that we were, that you can piece together. But I'd love if there was a flashback episode of Reggie explaining why he did what he did or why his planet did what they did or something like that. I that's think. the thing. It's, it's almost as though Reggie is the most mysterious at yeah, this stage. Uh, you know, the few little um sort of windows into his previous life mm-hmm. on another planet an alien but nonetheless um yeah they just it'd be good to have them coalesce together yeah. um to just really kind of explain it uh more fully but uh yeah, yeah thanks so much brandy absolutely yeah and um, brandy sent another voicemail into us uh, as well here's the second voicemail for brandy I have to disagree that through some personal connection with Victor, Harlan reached out to all the Umbrella Academy siblings specifically. I just don't think the show supports that theory, because if that was the case, Ben would also not exist in this universe. Yes, he had already passed on before Victor and Harlan met, but the connection would have already been there for Victor, and therefore that chain reaction would have included him if that was the case. Um. Also, 27 women died that day, uh, not 17. Um, And the Umbrella Academy not only had no connection with them, they did not even know about them. They only knew of the eight, the seven siblings and uh, Lila. And they'd only known about Lila for a few days. Um, So I just really think it's more likely that Harlan's powers either exhausted themselves before he killed all 43 women or he was able to finally get a handle on them like he said he was trying to and kind of reeled them in Uh, but he had already unfortunately killed 27 women I think that that's a much more likely theory um, for it than that there was some kind of personal connection for people he did not know uh, that affected so many others 
Thanks, Brandy. Yeah, stupidly, I even I, I didn't notice it when I was doing the edit. I for some reason said seventeen mothers were dead. I knew it was twenty seven. It was written in my notes, and I, I'd obviously seen the episode multiple times, so I knew it was more mothers than there were members of the Umbrella Academy. One hundred percent. I was just trying to think about the logic of where it spread from. Harlan says that the minute the light entered the world, he reached out. So I was going, oh, okay. Well, he must have connected instantly with Victor's mother first, and then that spread out around. But you're absolutely right, Chad. Obviously, there's way more than uh, more mothers that died that day than uh, than mothers of the Umbrella Academy. So, of course, it couldn't be just those connections. And you're right, it isn't. Uh, ben is still alive. But the only thing that was rationalizing that in my head was um, because uh, Ben didn't exist. So Harlan wouldn't have known Ben. That was the only reason I was I was saying it. But it's just a theory. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't uh, particularly important to the story. I don't think we'll find that out uh, either as to why it spread out the way it did. In the same way that we don't know why the forty three women themselves were chosen to be uh, to be instantly pregnant. Uh, we don't know that. So I was trying to rationalize it some way. But obviously, it's just a theory. And that's all. These are fun theories. <laughs> but thanks so much for your feedback, Brandy. And as always, yeah, just keep sending it in. Um, Always great to hear from fellow fans. Yeah, good stuff, Brandy. Thanks for thanks for the feedback. Uh, really good to get your thoughts and theories in on, on this one. Mm-hmm. We also got some feedback over on Facebook on our Facebook group from Akisha Horton, who says it was implied that Alison rumoured her husband to love her, never directly stated. We know she rumoured her daughter, which is what caused her husband to leave her. We are told she's struggling to balance how to use her powers. This, in my opinion, is why what happened to Luther is worse. Making him continuously pour hot coffee on his blistering hands and being able to speak out in pain just because he was racist and even burned her first does not change that that was torture. As Alison says back in season two, she made sure sure the racist would think twice before he burned somewhere else unprovoked again uh, another quote from allison when she rumored otto to kill his his own brother she could have easily had them both leave why would she tell someone to, uh, who she believed was hired to kill her and her family to leave wouldn't they come back and finish the job later uh, keep in mind all of the kids were trained to defend and kill we don't know what type of moral code reginald encouraged it is implied that they were on the right side of the law but we only know for sure that they were used to pursue Reginald's goals. I don't know that she has a lack of respect for others' free will or that she is grieving and making choices based in grief as opposed to what is best for all based on the outcome of the season without any spoilers. Hmm. Interesting. Thanks for no spoilers for the rest of the season there, Keisha. But yes, it does feel that Alison has a lot of difficulty as to when to use her powers or not. But I, I, I do feel she knows she's absolutely wrong using her powers on Luther uh, in, in that moment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, agreed. I agree. I really do feel that in this instance, she knows she's wrong. And it, again, is just trying to show that descent into villainous, descent into grieving, descent into madness, whatever way you want to kind of, into despair. Mm. Even. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I really like the idea, you know, that there is an assumption there that they're on the right side of the law, that primarily you know certainly what we've seen reginald is not particularly a nice guy and we see pogo giving uh the sparrows drugs to dope him mm-hmm. and as soon as that's sort of um worn off uh that he is pursuing his experimentation of the children but also you know there is the project oblivion that he was obsessing about so uh, and you know, in Pogo's mind, that was Reginald. Uh, he was going to put the sparrows in harm's way. Um, mm. So I, I I would agree. I think there it's Reginald focus as to what they do. Um, and he he's pretty objective and ice cold in terms of what he's looking to do. And I think this couples back to, you know, the balls of light and the fact he is an alien mm-hmm. and his overarching kind of story and a bit more of a fuller explanation so i yeah. i really like that sort of kind of nuance there uh akisha uh, yeah good stuff Thanks. like he has no morality he has no humanity he is yeah. he is an alien and they were all taken at birth as well so uh so they may have learned some of their morals from him yeah <laughs> for sure yeah thanks so much akisha yeah thanks akisha Thank you so much, Keisha. And thanks to everybody for listening along with us for our coverage of Umbrella Academy. This episode of Umbrella Academy on TV Podcast Industries is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon, including Jenny V. Thanks, Jenny V. Yes, thank you so much, Jenny V. 
Yeah, thank you, Jenny V. And of course, if you want to support us over on Patreon uh, for a regular monthly amount, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash TV podcast industries Mm -hmm. or for a one off support, you can head on over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash TV PI. And of course, Sharing the podcast is sharing the love. And so subscribing, rating us, leaving a review and supporting us uh, in that way is also uh, fantastic stuff as well. Fellow brollies. (laughs) Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Thanks so much for your support. We'll be back next week with two more episodes of Umbrella Academy. We'll be talking about season three, episode seven of We Design and episode eight, Wedding at the End of the World. Nice. We will also be covering another show over on Netflix as well, and that is Neil Gaiman's The Sandman, Episode 1. I mm, hope you're watching that one. Yes. And hopefully you don't have sand where we have sand from covering all of The Sandman. I'm going to just make sand puns and jokes for the whole thing. I promise I'll edit all of those out, <laughs> fellow <laughs> <academy>. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Talk to you again next time. Yes, thank you so much, and we'll speak to you again soon. Yeah, thank you so much, fellow Brollies, for joining us for this episode of Umbrella Academy. Uh, We will be back next time, of course, but until then, keep watching, keep listening, and keep being fascinated. Fascinated. Bye. 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 Bye.